There are no strings on me. Welcome back to Screen Crush. I'm Ryan Airy. Do you remember the trailers for Avengers Age of Ultron? They promised us a dark, intense movie with a terrifying and horrific villain, a menacing, eight-foot-tall, nightmarish Pinocchio, the villain who would tear the Avengers apart and bring about the Age of Ultron. Hope. I'll take that from them first. There's only one path to peace. Their extinction. But in reality, Ultron ended up being kind of goofy. <laughs> Avengers Age of Ultron isn't a great movie, but it's not the dumpster fire that some people make it out to be. For me, it's a beautiful mess. Despite its many flaws, this movie is unique. But in many ways, Ultron the character falls short of his potential because the villain fails to be intimidating. He never gets the upper hand on the heroes. He gets beaten up, thrown around, and embarrassed all of the time. Ultron never proves that he's the menace that this movie wants us to think he is. So let's dive into why Ultron isn't a terrifying villain, compare him with other villains, and how it could have been much better with just a few adjustments. I was meant to be new. I was meant to be beautiful. A few weeks back, I talked about the reasons why I love Age of Ultron, even with its many shortcomings, because Age of Ultron really does have some incredible moments, but it's not perfect, and most of its flaws stem from the titular character himself. Ultron's personality is a stark contrast from what we were promised, and a drastic departure from the comics. Ultron was made in Tony Stark's image, so it's fitting that he'll behave like his creator. Nobody has to break anything. Clearly you've never made an omelet. You beat me by one second. Ultron has a witty personality because he's a warped version of Iron Man. And thematically, it makes total sense for Ultron to be created by Stark, and I adore the parallels between them. But I think that this approach would have worked so much better if Ultron was an imposing villain. But because he isn't, the rest sort of crumbles. He does pretty well in the outsmarting department, but he's never a force that threatens the heroes in battle. They beat him in every fight, and pretty easily. And that's just it. How can we take Ultron as a serious threat when he keeps failing against the Avengers? I mean, look at me. Do I look like Iron Man? Stark is... No. I'm sorry. I'm so... Oh, I'm sure that's gonna be okay. I'm sorry. The thing is, Ultron's first confrontation with the Avengers goes pretty well for him. The scene is a very effective way to introduce the villain and his motivations, as he transforms from Tony's peacekeeping program into a rogue and dangerous AI, all because he sees the ugly nature of humanity that convinces him that the only way to bring peace to the world is to wipe out the people who create war. Well, that's us. And it's inevitable that Ultron will see the Avengers as his enemies, since from his point of view, they are obstacles to true world peace, something that we talked about at length in our Ultron Was Right video. There's only one path to peace, the Avengers' extinction. The introduction has the perfect effect, with his twisted, broken body, his poignant speech, and the overall eerie sense Ultron brings to the scene. So, for a first encounter, this is actually very good, but it all mostly falls apart afterward. Ultron never actively goes after the Avengers beyond the first scene. They always come to him. And even when Ultron sets up traps for them, he himself never feels effective in any of these encounters. All of his actions are very unimpressive, and he just feels like a weak villain. Ultron is pretty much the wily e. coyote of this movie. He keeps trying to get the Avengers, meep, meep. but he always fails and is humiliated every time. Oh, for God's sake. No, it's not today. The other day, I carved a whole chicken in the break room, and now Doug won't stop asking if it's Thanksgiving. <laughs> so, to get ready for Thanksgiving, I wanted a set of knives that were so well-crafted, they could have been made by Hattori Hanzo. So, I'm using Kamikoto Knives, the sponsor of this video. Each knife comes in this heavy-duty ash wood box to store it safely, and it just feels special when you open it. And when I carve that chicken, it sliced through the meat like butter and perfectly balanced, as all things should be. The knives are created by tapping into 800-year-old traditional Japanese techniques, swordsmithing, ironworking, and metal casting. Each blade is made of Japanese steel using techniques that have been perfected by generations of knife smiths. It's a shame Ultron didn't ask them to make his robots. Maybe then they wouldn't have fallen apart like a wet sandwich. 
All of these knives have gone through a rigorous 19 step process that takes years to complete and each set comes with a lifetime guarantee. No wonder these knives are used by chefs at Michelin star restaurants. So Kamikoto is offering our subscribers an extra $50 off any purchase with the discount code SCREENCRUSH. So click the link in the description to take advantage of this offer. Back to Ultron. You need patience. You need to see the big picture. When he faces the Avengers on Claw's ship, it's a disappointing fight. He has a quick and mediocre fight with Iron Man. He gets beat and destroyed. The character that actually has a real impact in this scene is Wanda, as she messes with the Avengers' minds and sends Hulk on a rampage. Yes, Ultron recruited her, but the optics of the scene are that Ultron gets his ass kicked while Wanda does all the heavy lifting. And yeah, ultimately Ultron wins this round. He gets the vibranium he needed, and he was able to remove the Avengers from the equation, at least for a while. You and I can hurt them, but you will tear them apart. Ultron is supposed to be the ultimate AI. He should do some hacking and Skynet stuff and all that. Like messing with Tony's suit or disable all of the Avengers toys since Tony built all of them. Oh, actually, he's the boss. I just pay for everything and design everything and make everyone look cooler. And Ultron can now use the weapons and the gadgets against the heroes. This should have been Ultron's big moment. He got himself a new menacing body, so why not use it to showcase that his villain is a tangible threat? If Ultron wasn't made to be a physical threat to the Avengers, then it makes sense for him to rely on mind games and his flunkies. Some villains don't have to be stronger than the heroes. Take Loki. He's no match for Thor or the Avengers, so he must use his wits and crafty tricks to gain the upper hand. But Ultron is supposed to be able to fight the Avengers on his own. He's an eight foot tall murder machine capable of destroying the heroes. And yet that never happens. He's unable to overpower the heroes and every scene only makes him feel weaker. You're so weak. The fight between Ultron and Captain America encompasses everything that doesn't work with Ultron. First, he loses Wanda and Pietro as his allies, and this makes Ultron look like a total idiot. I mean, for a super AI, he's pretty dumb to think that Wanda and Pietro will be just fine with him destroying the world. And then Ultron is attacked by Steve Rogers, and the whole thing makes Ultron seem like some feeble weakling. Just look at this moment. No, 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 leave me alone! I guess maybe it was meant to make us relate to him a bit, but instead it kills any menacing presence that Ultron had before this. He's utterly unimposing in his fight with Cap. And when Wanda and Pietro show up, Ultron just tucks his tail and runs away like a coward. Run, bitch! On top of that, Ultron loses the cradle containing Vision, so he completely fails in this scene on every level. And him capturing Black Widow is honestly such a pointless thing. It doesn't do anything for the movie. There's no stakes or consequences here. It feels like it was done mostly so Ultron can do his monologue in front of someone. I wanted to show you. I don't have anyone else. <laughs> Man, you are one pathetic loser. <laughs> So it's a terrible look going into the final battle. Any sense that Ultron is a real threat vanishes at this point. Now for comparison, take Thanos' first scene in Infinity War. When the Mad Titan shows up, you can just tell that this is the biggest baddie that's ever graced our eyes. He towers over everyone. His presence is imposing. And then Thanos proceeds to just destroy the Hulk. It's an utter and total dismantling. And at the time, Hulk was considered to be the most powerful being in the MCU. So this beatdown sends a clear message. Thanos is more powerful than the Hulk, so the Avengers are in serious trouble, and we, the audience, must pay attention to this guy. This isn't just another bad guy. This is the bad guy. Dude, you're on your own! <laughs> but it's not just one scene. I mean, Marvel builds on it. Thanos continues to be an intimidating and effective villain in the whole movie. It's consistent, and it creates more excitement for us to watch Thanos' clashes with the heroes since we know this villain raises the stakes. And to clarify, it's not just about the battles. Thanos wasn't imposing just because he destroyed the Hulk, although it certainly helped a lot. Thanos had a menacing presence in every one of his scenes. It was the way he talked, the way he towered over people. He just had that thing that great villains have. And more importantly, Thanos won in every one of his encounters. This created the perfect tension leading to the climax. Granted, Thanos won there as well, but usually the villains lose in the final battle, and that's fine. But every villain can feel like an imposing force with the correct buildup. Eric Killmonger didn't beat up the Hulk, but there was always something about his demeanor that felt menacing. Is this your king? Huh? 
Position kick! Even Zemo, who's not really the type of guy that punches people, feels intimidating. It's all about the execution, how these villains are presented, building the tension with their actions, constantly putting the heroes on edge, winning battles in a decisive way, and achieving their goals throughout the movie. This creates tension and raises the stakes. So even if we know that the heroes will win in the end, we're still invested and excited about the final battle, which is not the case with Ultron. I can't physically throw up in my mouth. You talk too much. Just imagine if, in his first scene in the movie, Ultron had a more significant impact. Like maybe he injures one of the Avengers, or he blows their tower up or something. Something that establishes Ultron as an effective and terrifying villain. A menace that will challenge the heroes like no one before. Maybe when Hulk goes on a rampage, Ultron's the one who stops him. I know this doesn't make sense, but let me explain. Ultron is making the point that the Avengers are a detriment to the world's peace, his mission. Ultron thinks we're monsters, that we're what's wrong with the world. This isn't just about beating him, it's about whether he's right. So Ultron stops Hulk not to save the day, but to make a point. Prove that the Avengers are incapable of protecting the world, so they need to let him do his thing. Now the comics version of Ultron gives us a truly terrifying villain. Ultron destroys whole cities, he starts the apocalypse, he kills countless people because he's on a mission to exterminate humanity. The stakes are super high as the Avengers are at the brink. Now I'm not saying that the movie had to follow the comics arc to a T, but certain aspects of that terrifying nature would have perfectly illustrated Ultron's menacing presence. Instead, we got a super AI who can't seem to remember what children are. People create smaller people? Uh, children! I lost the word there. Actually, forget about the comics. Just look at the Ultron that we got in What If. Now that's an Ultron. He's intimidating, he's terrifying, he's successful, and he's exactly what Ultron needs to be. He's perfect even without Vision's body in the Infinity Stones. So I guess it's a shame that we never got this kind of Ultron in the movies. Well, I guess What If is our consolation prize for the Ultron that we got in the movies. Fascinating. I want one. No. For most of the movie, he's focusing on building a new body and doing his own thing, while the Avengers go after him to mess up his plans. So this makes Ultron feel like a passive villain. Ultron can literally exist in multiple bodies at the same time, so why not use that? One copy can be working on building Vision, while others are keeping the Avengers busy by attacking them around the world. We even hear about attacks like this off screen. He's all over the globe. Robotics labs, weapons facilities, jet propulsion labs. Ultron failing to be an intimidating villain also ruins the movie's climax. Now admittedly, there are more problems with the final battle besides Ultron. Many of them stem from behind the scenes conflicts. And there was also the impossible pressure of Age of Ultron, not only living up to the first movie, but surpassing it. So I guess it explains why the climax of both movies feels so similar, as the studio probably wanted to rely on the things that worked in 2012's Avengers, which ultimately created a very familiar and rehashed final battle. But regardless of the behind the scenes problems, by the time we arrive at the climax, the stakes don't feel as high as they should be. The whole city turned meteor feels empty because at that point, Ultron doesn't even feel like a real threat. Have you been juicing? A little vibranium cocktail? Ultron spends most of the battle doing absolutely nothing as he keeps being punched and thrown around like some cartoon villain. There is one point where Ultron beats up Thor, so there's that. But the way the scene is constructed makes it all feel unsatisfying. The editing's very choppy and unfocused. The movie doesn't stay in the fight, it cuts multiple times to other things. And so much stuff happens in those other scenes that the Thor-Ultron fight loses any meaning and importance. That's why the Thanos vs. Hulk fight works so well. The movie stayed on it for the whole thing. It was the most important thing on the screen. Here it's just Ultron punching Thor for a bit and nothing else. And it's all there just to lead to the punchline with Vision and the hammer. It's terribly well balanced. Well, if there's too much weight, you lose power on the swing. It's all played for laughs. There's no nuance here, no real consequences. And this fight is one of the only offensive attacks from Ultron during the whole battle. So you can see why it's so disappointing. And Ultron's army of sentries feels unimpressive as well, serving as the usual cannon fodder for the heroes. The robots are just there for the heroes to punch something. Now to be fair, this is something we see in all the Avengers movies, the Chitauri, the Outriders, Thanos' army in Endgame, so this issue isn't exclusive to Age of Ultron. But I guess in other battles, the minions at least feel a bit more threatening. For example, during the battle in Wakanda, there's a point where the Outriders actually overwhelm the heroes. They feel like a legitimate threat. There's too many of them! Ah! But this particular battle felt tiresome to me. 
just the heroes breaking CGI robots for 20 minutes. I mean, just look at the concept art for the movie. This one looks so intense. If something even close to this happened in the movie, that would completely change the tone of the battle. Suddenly, this isn't just a fun battle where the Avengers fight oversized toys, but an actual war, a battle for survival. The thing is, you don't need a gazillion of Ultron's bots to raise the stakes. What if, instead of having a bunch of worthless lookalike robots, maybe Ultron creates about six or seven unique sentries, each one specifically tailored to defeat each member of the Avengers? This way you can do less than 10 bots and still have a great battle that also feels different from the New York battle. Maybe Tony Stark created all kinds of contingency plans to defeat his friends, and now Ultron is using that information against the heroes. Like having a more powerful Hulkbuster to stop the Hulk, or a sentry that engulfs Thor's hammer with vibranium liquid, limiting Thor's power for the majority of the battle. You know, like creative ways to make the battle more interesting and intense. You mustn't be afraid to dream a little bigger, darling. We do get a pretty epic moment in the battle where all the Avengers team up in the 360 shot against the Ultron bots. Once again, Ultron does very little here. This moment is there to showcase how awesome the Avengers are, and this moment does exactly that. It's a great shot. Ultron has a very quick scuffle with Vision, which basically amounts to nothing, and then he gets his ass kicked by Iron Man, Thor, and Vision, followed by a punch from Hulk that sends him flying again like some silly cartoon villain. And once again, it ends on a punchline, as Ultron's sentries just run away. They'll try to leave the city. We can't let him, not even one. But it completely undermines the threat that the Avengers are facing. I mean, just imagine if, instead of all this, Ultron fought the Avengers himself, putting his new body to use, and his army is only there for support. They're just watching. Kind of like all the Agent Smiths in Matrix Revelations. Mr. Anderson, welcome back. We missed you. What a defining moment it would have been to see Ultron going beast mode and battling all the Avengers all by himself, finally being a true menacing enemy to Earth's mightiest heroes. And yeah, Ultron does kill Quicksilver, which is pretty big for this movie. But let's be honest, Pietro's death was never that significant. He was forgotten pretty quickly, and Vision plays a far more important role in Wanda's story than her brother. Also, how Ultron kills Quicksilver is just so lame. I mean, he uses the machine gun of a Quinjet. Maybe there's something poetic about it, since Tony Stark's weapons killed Wanda and Pietro's parents, and now the Quinjet that Tony built and upgraded kills Pietro. So I guess it makes sense on some level. Again, it's like poetry, it's sort of they rhyme. Mm -hmm. Every stanza kind of rhymes with the last one. Anyways, Ultron kills the least important character in the movie, and then he gets his ass kicked by the Hulk again. And then Wanda rips his metallic heart out. The Avengers save the day, and that's all there is to it. How it all played out is such a shame. Frankly, I'm depressed and ashamed. Now look, all this being said, the movie's not all bad. Age of Ultron is a turning point for the MCU. The consequences of the film lead directly to the events of Civil War, which later caused the Avengers' defeat in Infinity War. So, indirectly, Ultron has one of the most crucial roles in the MCU. And to finish this on a positive note, I still think that Ultron's first and final scenes are some of the most powerful moments in the MCU. That introduction works so well, as this newly born villain interrupts the Avengers during their celebration, as they are faced by this twisted mirror image of themselves peacekeeping program that was corrupted and warped because of its outlook on humanity, because Ultron understands that the Avengers are not enough. Down in the real world, we're faced with ugly choices. Who sent you? I see a suit of armor around the world. And this scene becomes even more meaningful thanks to Ultron's final moments, as he faces Vision in that beautiful debate about humanity, existence, and purpose. How fitting it is that these two creations outgrew their original program directives and found a new purpose. Like two angels who fell from heaven, one becoming a monster twisted with corruption, while the other became a champion of humanity. Vision is the culmination of the mistakes of all the characters in the movie, going back to Tony Stark's playing God and recklessly creating new life, to the Maximoff's destructive need for vengeance, to the Avengers' hypocrisy, and of course, Ultron's failures as a peacekeeping program and a villain. Ultron and Vision represent the movie's main theme. It's about failure. So it all comes down to what Vision said about humanity. Humans are odd. Try to control what won't be. But there is grace in their failings. I think you missed that. Humanity's obsession to control things will always lead to failure, like Tony Stark's need to achieve world peace. And since Ultron is an imitation of Stark, he himself suffers from the same obsessions that eventually lead to failures as a villain. In the end, it's our failures that tend to push us forward, to learn from our worst mistakes and find paths that lead us to success. 
Ultron leads to Zemo, to Civil War, to Thanos, to the Snap, and to everything beyond that. All of these failures are ways for the heroes to learn and improve and become better. So maybe Ultron was never meant to be a truly menacing villain. Perhaps his whole purpose was to challenge the Avengers on a more personal level, plant the seeds for the conflict of Civil War, prove to them that they are liable and hypocritical. I suppose we are both disappointments. <laughs> I suppose we are. Still, things would have worked so much better if Ultron had a more intimidating presence in the movie. Thankfully, the MCU fixed some of Ultron's missed opportunities with What If. But let me know what you think of Ultron down in the comments or at me on Twitter. Tell me how you think he could have been a more intimidating villain. And if it's your first time here, subscribe and ring that bell. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.